for the opponents to get there, and it honestly starts in the draft. What do Onik, what do Blacklist want as Pryo? It's about being unique. It's about looking to outplay your opponent. But it all begins with the tools that you will arm your warriors with. This is a 5v5 game. Make sure you understand and don't miss a single moment as we jump into the draft. Now, coming and pulling this back a little bit more, we need to talk about the fact that Wise not only plays this sacrificial role in the drafting phase, but it opens up a new level of draft for Blacklist International. We've seen it against FIMP, putting him on something like a Valentina, and then all of a sudden, Burnex Flash, they recognize that to stop UA. And one thing that you'll notice about Blacklist International is they have a theme for a series, for example. Well, it's true that they can pick up like Valentina D very standard, and maybe the Fredrin as their priority in the first place, but there's always that theme. For example, their recent series against Burn X Flash, it was all of a sudden the Baxia. It was all of a sudden the position 5 Novaria. So you have to watch out for that. We know for sure that this will be a long series, right? This couldn't be 4 0, and you have to watch out for those key heroes in the draft of Blacklist International. Honestly, looking at the bans just now, Fanny being banned out, the Kaja being banned out, as well as the Kadito, what does this spell that Blacklist doesn't want? They don't want engage. They don't want dive. They don't want huge burst damage. And now looking at Onik, I gotta say it's all about respecting and understanding your yep. opponents. Banning out the S's, banning out the Diggy, but more yep. importantly, banning out that psycho Frederick. Exactly. This forces Blacklist to go for something like the Varya, the first uh -huh. pick. There is also the Joy. I think those are the two priorities because Edward really plays at that oh. one. But of course, since the one one is opened, oh, I can see it. This is a trap set up by Onik for sure. The trap set up by Onik. I mean, look. This is VY's ninth grand final appearance out of 11 as part of Blacklist's active roster, winning nice. four during their appearances. What? That's insane. That's what a stat. What is that? Great numbers, right? I mean, MPL, uh, MPL PH Season 7, Season 8, M3, mm -hmm. and as well as Season 10. And that shows their experience, right? Yep. And it also shows their knowledge in the game. So that is going to be very beneficial when it comes down to the drafting yep. phase. Now, Onik, can they level that? Oh. Uh. Definitely. This is a trap. I think it's, I think the one one is a trap. They go for something like Franco in the, in the absence of Kaja. Oh, yep. <laughs> you know what? Okay. The Franco pick as well as the Franco pick. Because again, looking at the way that they're drafting, what does this spell out? Where Ow, he just wants to make sure that he can yep. win his lane and then let his team set things up for him to use the crossbow tank. But look at the the, the Franco as well as the Franco. The Franco is a good way to deny him of kills. Remember as well, in all the matchups that we've seen from Blacklist International, they always ban the Franco. This yep. hero has always been one of their kryptonites, That's as right. to say, on their Ube lineup. The fact that they can split them yeah. open and the fact that oh, they also have a Fairmist who punishes up, up compositions yeah. is already really good for them. But that's why Blacklist yeah. will play with the range, will play with the disengage of the Akai and the Navaria. Really interesting because I thought they were going to lean on the higher performing Ube, especially on Valentina. He has hard carry games with the Valentina, yeah. but instead decides to go Navaria. Oh, this is because of the fact that Navaria can be flexed. Yeah. It can be played in a position for the mid lane. Also, the Rome and uh, having it in the first to be fixed on Black Sinjarsons right. ensures that they will have that security wow. of the UA, but a very early league. Oh my! I'm happy. Yeah. You guys happy? I am too More happy. than happy. I, it depends for who, right? I mean, sure, everyone's happy to see that prowess once again from Kyrie himself, but the thing is, if you're Blacklist, what kind of lockdown is available for the Ling, right? Franco's been taken. I just out of the board for Venus. Or don't lock him down. Exactly. Just don't, take away the buff. Don't lock him down. Take away the buff. So mid control becomes prio for them, and that's why I feel like Onik. They really understand that. They save that link pick for the for, for the last pick in the yep. first phase to bait it out. Novaria picked up. So now that's still a flex pick. But remember, Novaria alone, not a lot of mid control. So you can already see Onik. They're taking out all the mages that can help Novaria clear. This is where it gets really scary because if we're not even just talking about the mid lane. We've seen what the mid lane looks like for Onik. Maybe a little bit for the side of Blacklist International. But let's talk about EA. XP here because again they're in the first phase alone the fact that Franco wasn't yep. even banned out they left up the joy as well as the one one it's a give and take yep I think that it is it's either Teresa or Lapu Lapu for the side of Blacklist International in that case Lapu Lapu gonna be perfect against uh, the shields of Faramis it's like a free setup because you clear out the extra shields very easily then you also think about Teresa so that you couple it up you need a way for for Blacklist International to kind of front line so that the one one will have a will have a, a time to get the stacks in I think Onik will, you know, 
now that we are <laughs> talking about this, yep. I, this is a good match. Farsa yep. would have been perfect. Agreed. I'm thinking Farsa lap was their last picks for Blacklist. But for Onik, they might go for a for a non-item dependent gold laner because when Ling is picked up by Onik, automatically you shift your core to the Ling, not to the gold laner anymore. Mm -hmm. Someone that's a little bit more self-sufficient, you know, doesn't have to get punished too hard. Maybe something that can force priority. I mean, the tricks as well as Claude yeah. are open. Brody, maybe? No, honestly, Bro honestly, like, all of those options are amazing, amazing for different things. Claude can basically take care of himself. Brody can have lane priority, making it so that even if you don't have the items, you can skill, uh, yep. still skill up very well. And the thing is, the Brody here going up against the 1-1, one -one, still, uh, me and Merkel, we talked about it in yeah. private, but the thing about gold laners, it almost doesn't matter what the matchup is because it is very, very dynamic. It's going to be the Beatrix, and yep. that's exactly why, right? If we want to see just the main counter, it's going to be the Aerithel, but we're not going to see that here. The Claude is an amazing lane for the 1-1, one -one, but it all comes down to skill. Yep. We've seen Chiku uh, get dominated by a 1-1 one -one before, so the Beatrix here is the most flexible, yep. right? If Claude can do everything independently, Beatrix can adapt to any team stuff. Okay, all right, we're seeing the next couple of picks. Arlet gets locked in for the side of Blacklist International. It's been a while since we've seen Edward on this Arlet. I was maybe oh. hoping for Benedetta, but now Minotaur as well. This fits the MO of yep. Blacklist International, for sure. Now that leaves us with the EXP laner, right? For the side of Onyx. Why do I have a feeling we might see something like the Masha, Masha for Boots? I, yeah. Against 1-1, one -one, it's great. Yeah, uh, against Arlet, it's okay. The, the worst maybe that Onyx could take is Teresda, which is actually not that bad at all overall against the Arlot. But yeah, I think the Masha is a. It fits, it fits the bill. What about Uranus? They already have enough damage coming in. Mm. They need a frontliner, someone who can survive in towards the late game as well. And no one from Blacklist will be able to fully burst this Uranus if it gets online. Mm, okay, okay. I'll do you one better because I hate Uranus. What about okay. Grok or Benedetta, right? Either or can definitely try and force priority. But nope, they're going to take the Uranus here. You got it right on the ball, Miracle. Right now, honestly, looking at the drafts, here's the thing. We've seen Novara, be, uh, Novara being piloted by Oh My Venus, but now UA is going to use it. And here's the thing. We talked about controlling the purple buff. The Novaria can steal it away if enough vision is provided. All right, let's take a look at the audience predictions real quick, right? Before we get into the nasty tidbits of wow. this matchup. But this is a very interesting split between the two. Even the regions are kind of unsure, but of course there is priority in their respective regions here. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Everybody's going to have their little bit of a taste of what they like. Personally for me, I'm actually kind of liking Blacklist International's comp just a little bit more. What about you, Eterna? I have to agree with you here. Rest of the table? Onik. You know what? I'm going to go with Onik. Yeah, me, I, sorry, man. I just like, tiebreaker. I, I've given Link and Uranus to Onik. You know what? Now it's time. This is the start of a legacy for both teams. Blacklist International going up against Onik. This is the Grand Finals MSC game number one. All right. All right. Let's see. Edward unbending well. Kyrie with a killing spree. Mid control, who has it, you think, Wolf? Oh, definitely going to be the Faramis, Franco, right? Because of the fact that Faramis can just clear it out easily. It's the Minotaur and the Novaria. Not much wave clear. With level 1 though, but if they do get level 2 on the Novaria, it's going to be okay. This rotation that you're seeing from Blacklist International ensures level 2 on Oh My Venus. So he picks up the roam uh, um, right now. So yep. this is a faster tempo for Blacklist International when it comes to getting into their ultimates. Yeah, I really feel like getting their, their power spike a little bit earlier is going to be very, very key because Kyrie in the early stages of the game, not going to be able to do much. So they just got to make sure to scale up just a little bit faster so that they can actually put tempo into the jungle, making sure that Kyrie gets someone locked down with minimum. Amount of, oh, amount of energy. That was pretty close. That was pretty close. And the thing is, when you're playing the 1-1, one -one, right, it's the most annoying thing in the world when your second skill gets popped too many times. Here in the lane as well, we can see, this is why the Uranus pick works, right, Wolf? What do you think yeah. about this matchup? Um, I think it's a, it's a wash. You know? you know, that's what you always say with Uranus. Unless there's an influence. Yep. See? But right Not now, even needing the purify. Yeah. Yeah, but again, the Uranus just heals up very, very fast. For now, we can definitely see Blacklist International. They're trying to make sure that their laners are able to leave the lane very, very quickly because they want to make sure that they're able to contest the turtle. And again, yeah. having the Akai almost guarantees it. Almost. Mm -hmm. About 70%, I would say. Yeah. I'm interested to see how they will uh, approach this because the, there's a difference, right? They will, they will want level 4 there. Rovers. Yep. That's the switch that they did. The fire is already at the bottom, the fire already there. 
it's going to be a full 5v5 into the first turtle of the game. Yep, and this one, I gotta say, we gotta look at all of the stun capabilities as well, because looking at Blacklist, not only do they have the Akai, but Edward on this Arlet can actually stun up Kyrie, making sure that he can't use the Retribution on time. And now, looks like he's going for Boots, but up top, CW gets a kill. Boots opening up the map gave them so much more prio to play on the other side of the map, and this is why Onyx yep. composition can work. They can split up the map open with the Franco, they Ooh. have a lot of kill pressure, but Wise is already trying to punish Kyrie early on by going to the buffs. Wise stealing it away. Boots just putting some pressure once again, but it oh, should just out. be a trade. Wait a minute. Look at Wise, Kyrie. No retry on Wise. So Kyrie should be able to take it right now, but we can see the minutes Fury come down. Kyrie with the top of the blades. Escapes. Gets out. The crowd goes wild. Oh, I really love how Arnik approached this. Oh, Boots! Oh! Dude. Agent Zero. Right Agent now, zero. I gotta say, man, all of the 1v1s, even our observer is going to catch it. A yeah. lot is going on in the map here right yep. now. Whoa. Edward utilized the crab so that he'll get extra vengeance stacks. Very smart. That's Agent Zero for you. While Ooh. up top, they baited. Onyx, they show that they have some influence in the turtle. Then all of a sudden, after Kiba wow. gets teleport, rotates to the top quickly. CW. Wow. It was the nine minions very well played there. They want to really, really shut Owl down. But Blacklist, they do not take uh, all these free objectives and say nothing. They yep. go for the trade instantly. Right now, I gotta say, looking at the map right now, 1.5k gold lead for Onik. It looks like for some reason, both CW as well as Kyrie, they're kind of winning yep. here, Wolf. Yeah, I, this is because of the influence of Onik Lepis. You know that Uranus taking Miracle as well as Gideon and uh, Aether talk about it. Self-sufficient in the XP lane. No need to go there. Onik, they focus on top lane and Owl is just there to fend for himself, it's not gonna be enough. Well, oh, Venus is getting poked by a lot. Kyrie might actually look to go for the all-in right now. He goes for the Finch points, purple buff is up. He needs to prioritize that. But Venus doesn't have the regen. He's already very low. Yeah, but right now we gotta look at Blacklist. They're moving together. The only one that's not there is Owl. They're looking at the purple buff. Edward moving forward. Boots as well as Sans is trying to create space. Boots now with the Consecration. That's going to be the Cult Altar helping him out. He does not have the Purify, but that's going to be the heavy spin by Wise in the back. Not going to be used for much as Sans is able to pull them back. But it's Rage. On to Edward. That's the whole thing. And the Bloody Hunt locks him down. It's a kill for Onik. Romer traded in for the Edward. Oh, Sans! Jumps forward. Fires another. Kyrie with the top of the blaze. This should not be another kill. Kai just buying Four some blades. time, but meanwhile, Owl. Here's the thing, man. We got to look at Onik. They knew what yep. Blacklist was trying to set up. Yep. And how did they fight that back? I don't know how they did it, but Kyrie was able to get the purple. Then all of a sudden, Keyboy fights a good opening. Boots was soaking a lot from the resources of Blacklist International, was put low. But because of uh, the ultimate coming from Sans, he was able to bring all of his HP back. That was a lot of sustain on Onik's side. Here's the thing, man. I got to say, in terms of the way they were fighting, it was absolutely beautiful. And now we got to check the difference of gold here. And I got to say, in terms of the difference, the yep. biggest difference is between Kyrie as well as Wise. That's right. It's because Wise wanted to go for the steal on the purple, but Kyrie was able to get the uh, opener, gets so many kills, 0-0 zero, zero and 3. I mean, and now they even uh, position themselves into the turtle. Okay. Owl is oh. in that bush now with a basic attack. Kyrie's going to be spotted out. That's a knockup only on the Sans as he pops in the Shadow Stampede. Now locked down. That's Owl picking up the kill. Sans is down, but the passive will gain him an instant respawn as there is a fight down below. This time, Boots having a better time putting down the stacks yep. on Edward. Yeah, right now I gotta say, man, Boots is making sure that Edward doesn't get to play the game. Yep. Wise here, sign a turtle. Oh, my Venus is there as well. Onik goes in. Do they want to take a steal here? Oh, bloody hunt by Keyboy. Lock and Wise up. The heavy spin is not gonna be used at all right now as Venus crumbles and falls as well. The, fact, the, the fact that Sense died with the heavy spin, you know, soaking the heavy spin before that turtle fight, you thought that Blacklist Interesting would have the advantage, but no, it didn't. Because now, no heavy, heavy spin to counter a Keyboy. Keyboy locking down during the threat threshold, and Onik gets a turtle easily. Okay, right now, look at the map situation. 3.8k gold lead. The map Ooh. looks very red. Owl for now looks like he's trying to get as much as he can. Kyrie now having the Berserker Fury. What does this spell for Blacklist International? Just snowball. It spells snowball. Onik, they don't even need to Chewe. Now he's going to be a split push as well as Boots. Kyrie's gonna just tear through all of the damage of Blacklist International. Right now, I gotta say, man, even Keyboy Mirko, we don't see him going for a lot of hooks. He's just like, okay, I'm just gonna wait. Someone comes in, I'm just gonna lock you down. 
it's very hard at this point for Wise to go for any red tree contest because Keyboy is just being an absolute menace. Also using the Shishi mode, and that probably gives Black Mister National a bit of a you know not a good flashback as yeah. uh, you know the four yeah. O's. Yeah, four O's. Yeah, but you know, this happened before against uh, against Black Mister International. So oh, oh my Venus. Even Fury Suns does pop in to call Alter Keyboy. Still locked down with the heavy speed right now. The crossbow tank is ready, but Keyboy is going to be first to down as Kyrie takes everything. Now it comes to play, it's back again. They might win this right now. CW walks forward. Kyrie with the pass hands. It's CW with a double kill. Meanwhile, look at Boots. Look at Boots. He's wearing the boots. He's walking in the base. Dude, I got to say, what is this Uranus doing? He's not uh -huh. catching the fight. Oh, what a snipe. No, beautiful win of nature. Edward walks forward. Sans, he might fall this time around. Edward using the reset. Sans with a channel stampede. Walking out, but the vengeance follows it through. Sans is trying his best to run away, but he will just recall. But look at the map. Controlled by Onyx still. I, I, I gotta ask this wolf. Onyx, were they being too confident? Were they overextending there? Oh, well, I think it's part of their MO, but yeah, they, they surely did overextend in there. They didn't realize that the Wind of Nature was the second item for Owl, and mm -hmm. I want to have to credit that to Owl. Very nice itemization from that guy, was able to outplay Tewe, and because of that, they were able to recover for a little bit. Yeah, right now we can definitely see Blacklist, after getting that kill up top, they're trying to set things up, because now that the Lord is here, both Onyx as well as Blacklist, they're mm. moving together. They're trying to make sure that they have a very good situation for them to start the Lord. But for now, Boots is just zoning everyone yep. away. Sans, you can open the map. He knows there's two people there. Keyboy, are you going in for the hook? But the hook did not connect. This is what Boots needs to do. He just constantly is walking them down as Kyrie walks over to the Lord. Boots is dealing so much damage and Blacklist International don't even know it. Look at that, all the stacks popped in. Boots pops in, the Purify gets out. Now a lot of CC is placed onto him, but he is still alive. Heavy spin already used. This might just be Blacklist International forced to concede the Lord. Yeah, right now we can definitely see that Onyx is playing with Blacklist. They're trying to make sure that Boots, whatever you do, not just get vision. Try to tell us what's going on. Wise right now yep. does not have the ult, and Kyrie's at top. Right now, Onik, they're playing a very good macro play. Uh, they're, they're not letting Wise play as well. Uh, Edward needs to, needs to always be man to man versus uh, Boots, while, of course, Wise is always forced to use the ultimate. And now, CW stole the purple buff from Wise. Bloody hot, that's the oh. queen falling without anything. Ah! What? What? The Lord away from Blacklist! That was the top of the blaze! CW with a double kill for him. Edward with the final splash, but he's not going to be able to distract for long as now he's giving the gun down. CW with a triple. Now flickering forward. Awa, woo! Able to escape you and now with the Astral Sphere. But CW wants to take this turret down. Onyx wants to crack the base open. Oh my god, what was that play? Right now, here the crowd. They're loving Onyx. Yeah. They got the Lord, Kyrie, fast hands, amazing reaction speed. If Weiss has the drive-by, Kyrie has the fly-by, the Sky King <laughs> literally knew what he needed to do. The play was there, he split push so that Blacklist would feel confident, but he knew the timing all along. He knew that because of the first one, he can just get back to the Lord Peak and get that because he's level 14 compared to Weiss's 10. Right now, look at the map. Onik, they're not gonna try to force it out. They managed to get a mid inhibitor. Now, Blacklist, they're oh. trying to look for a situation. Wise goes in, is that Wise? On Keyboy, it's only on Keyboy, the roamer. It's the worst possible target, maybe. No, Boots is the worst possible target because you can see him right now just recalling in the faces of Blacklist International. They're looking for some more, but honestly, at this point, it's only 10 minutes. They cannot take these base turrets down that fast. They need to bait out these passives. And that's going to be Naren Hook. Oh. The Queen is down again. Kyrie jumps out of the back. Wise, 1 HP, Kyrie! Oh. And CW finds a double. Dude, that was a big burst of damage, and now Camille going in, Edward! Bridge points have to bait it out, Edward falls, Agent Zero is down! And Onik in 11 minutes, they take game one! What an opener! Blacklist International going up against Onik. What a very, very fast game, and I gotta say, Kyrie, what Ooh. an amazing man on that link. By the way, that's the first win of Kyrie against V Wise. Wow. wow. Against V Wise in an international finals. The reason I said 
that this draft was better, and I think you guys have a similar opinion, is the fact that this is Onyx Signature. I've seen this before. M3, it's a banana split! How? How can you not have seen a banana split? Yeah. Because I didn't even mention it in the broadcast. Yeah. I was like, wait, they want to go for pickoffs. They want to split up the map, but yep. it's yeah, it's classic Raja Yeba. Here's the thing. When you forget history, history has a way of repeating itself. Yeah. And now Onyx, I got to say, it's in their DNA. Even if they close the book, it's not a problem for them to open it back up and execute like it's nothing, man. The Uranus just works so well because uh -huh. you take away the attention of Edward. You have to, for you are forced to put the Arlot to stay against the Uranus for quite a long time. And the farm, the macro was there for the side of Onyx. I gotta say, Gideon. Did you expect that game to be that fast? No, I really wasn't. I thought Blacklist was going to be able to slow things down at some point of time. And I was like, okay, maybe they can get, have some high ground defense. They're only, what, 5k down. Next thing I blinked, all of a sudden it was 9. Yeah, really just kind of snowballed from there, right? And this is what I was... Th we were talking about this in-game, right? Literally! We were like, this man mm. was so disrespectful, recalling in the base. And he is your MVP boots. He did so well being able to split the map, like you mentioned, and was able to just distract, honestly, the members of Blacklist. Yeah. Right now, Mirko, we got to see it, man. What are boots used for? They're going to walk all over, over you. you. I mean, uh, That's a center. You're close enough, yeah. right? Yeah. But the thing is, Uranus has no feet. That is, that's a <laughs> 5 out of 10 at best, but you know who's 10 out of 10? Who's 10 out of 10? Definitely. The way that he played it, the way that the Coach Yev as well as Coach, Coach Addy designed this draft and this strategy, went for the split push, and of course, they have the Link. So Link and Uranus, there's only one way for that to work. It's a couple of ways for sure, but the best way is to split, and that's what they did. Yeah, and you know what? There was some level of consistency from Boots. Yeah. Had he lost his lane any harder yeah. to Edward, I think this would have been a very different looking game overall. Yeah. It's great to see that they're able to do everything they were able to apply yeah. in this game with their comp, and more importantly, just keyboy things. Yeah. Dude, first of all, I gotta say, the thing about Captain Boots is we don't see a lot on him. The no. cameraman. For some reason, it's like, eh, Boots is not doing anything. But I gotta say, when you don't see him, he's the most scariest. Yeah. He's like the member on the side that you don't really look at much, but he just says to you, yo, be careful. Yeah. Yo, be careful. I keep, I gave him, I keep talking about him all the time as nice guy Boots. Nice but guy. I feel at this point, Boots is literally doing all of the dirty work yeah. uh -huh. for Onik. Love it. I want to say Onik, um, the moment that they saw that the Navaria will be the mid laner and you have the Minotaur, as well as the fact that it's like a, th th they're reliant on one more. You're looking at the composition of Blacklist, yep. even if you design it in a way that they have all of the items up, the damage is really just going to come from Owl and maybe someone from UA, but UA is not an AoE damage. So the moment that they saw that, Onik just decided, okay, let's go Uranus, let's split the map, let's not let them farm. Kyrie alone can dish out the damage as long as he snowballs, as long as he gets the fir first few minutes of the game with the Assassin Emblem killing spree, he's gonna be destroying Blacklist International. I gotta say, man, because here's the thing, Uranus just got buffed, and I gotta say, the fight between the EXP leaders, again, we, we have to talk about boots on this Uranus pick. I mean, like, you know, it's a meme for, for Gideon. He doesn't like this hero, it's kind of boring, but come on, get it. In <laughs> what you saw just now, mm -hmm. what did boots? in the entire game did for the entire team. It's influence. It's how much he influences the entire map. The fact that Arlet can't clear as quickly as Boots is able to stack up those Ionic edges yep. as quickly as he can just to clear it out and then Woo! start pushing into the enemy jungle gives Onik some great information yep. for the decision makings, right? And then it's all up to Kyrie to just make it through those 50-50s. For example, the vertical jungle during that very first turtle. Yeah, it was all mostly set up by Boots as well, right? I mean, again, the fact that he only has 50% KP and he still <laughs> took the most damage in the game shows you just how yep. oppressive he is because in a lot of these situations you see him he doesn't really get a kill uh, participation on but he baits out the heavy spin he baits yep. out the final yep. slash exactly. the lord in the bottom lane that could have been wise's way to come back in the game but because he didn't have the heavy spin because it was baited out by mr boots yeah you could say that he's a masochist yes he There's, likes pain that's how you use the uranus that's how you're